Hello everyone, this is the IFC Architect and today we are doing the Blenderbim step-by-step project tutorial for beginners. Um, I'm not going to explain the process of installing Blenderbim, that's covered in another video on the channel, and I'm not going to explain the process of managing Blender, that is going to come in a forthcoming video. But uh, I would advise that you check the latest build that I'm using, which is on the about page of the IFC Architect channel. Uh, just so that you are up to scratch. Okay, cool. I'm just going to start by turning on my screencast keys so you can tell what I'm doing. Everything I'm doing here is recorded in the left hand side. And then just very simply, uh, my layout, I've just got the properties on the right hand side and the outliner, which shows everything in the project on the left hand side. I also have the asset browser here in the bottom left, but I'm just going to remove that for now. This is the most efficient layout for using IFC project files as far as I can tell. Um, then just two things to note, you should probably turn on your snaps, that just makes things easier. These are the ones I use, um, it just makes snapping things to each other much easier. And then also this little uh, gizmo here, which allows you to just grab and move, adjust, is activated here. Just your object gizmos move. Okay, cool, that's the basics, and let's get into the tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do is select everything, including the default cube, and we're going to delete it. Um, then we're going to create our IFC project. It's found in the scene properties tab, IFC project info, IFC four, we're going to use metric millimeters and square and cube meters. And then just make sure to select your demo library or, or half of this isn't going to work for you. Okay, cool. Then we're just going to say create project and you can see it's loaded the project file structure. It goes project site, building story, an appropriate MT for each of those things. And then we have our library here, which is our types. You see if they've loaded, I'm just going to hide it again and we're going to collapse this because we don't need it right now. I'm going to press N on the on the number pad and I'm going to select tool and I'm going to come here and select the BIM tool to get started. So you can see it's loaded up a profile preview of the IFC beam. We're not going to use a beam at the moment, we're going to use a wall type and we're going to use a 200 wall. So you can add this wall by using this add button or clicking shift A which is the hotkey. So we say shift A and it's added uh, a wall here. So I'm going to select seven on my numpad, which is going to align me to a plan view. So this orients us with Y to the north and south and X to the east and west. This is very useful if you are an architect or in the engineering construction industry. And then we can very simply use the 3D cursor to roughly adjust the length of the wall using shift E. Or if we want a very specific length, we can type it in here on the length. Uh, so I wanted this to be 4,250 millimeters, which is 4.25 millimeters. And then we're just going to snap our 3D cursor here and say shift. You can see it's loaded it in the same size. Um, and this one we want to be 3,500 millimeters. So we're going to select that, but we want the full length to be that. So I'm just going to move this GY to bring it to the edge. And you can see we have a bit of a messy junction here where they overlap with each other. So we're just going to select the one we want to over to be the priority first and then shift and select the second one. And we say shift T and then it's resolve that join with a butt. Basically, so I'm going to tap seven again. I'm going to shift and we're going to say shift A and then we're just going to extend it and we say shift A and we're going to extend to cut it there. And then I'm just going to add another one here, shift A. I'm going to say shift R to rotate it. And then I want this length to be one, one, five hundred. And we're just going to say uh, adjust it there and say shift A and shift E. Now we're just going to add the internal walls. I'm going to say 100. I'm going to click here and I'm going to say shift E. I'm going to say shift R and I'm going to move it uh, GX by 1 200 in that direction. And then I'm going to say shift A and I'm going to move this GY by 1 200 in that direction. And I'm going to select both of them and say shift T so they join together. And you can see we have some lovely internal walls now. I'm going to, the last thing I'm going to do is select this external wall here and one 200 in height there. So it's adjusted. So this is an external wall. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to select some, add some doors and windows. We're going to hit, go down here and select the IFC door type. We're going to snap our 3D cursor there. We're going to select the wall and then say shift A to add the door. And we're going to do the same thing here. Select the wall, shift A. And then we're going to go here and select the window types. We're going to snap our 3D cursor, select the wall, shift A, snap our 3D cursor, shift A. Okay, brilliant. We've got doors, windows, walls, all of it sorted. The next thing we're going to go on to is to create an IFC room. 
basically, and IFC space is what it's called, but it's similar to rooms in Revit or ARCHICAD. So we're going to get out of the, the BIM tool here, and we're going to just choose the normal selection box, and we can say Shift A, Mesh, Cube. So basically, we've just added a cube that we want to use as a proxy. We're going to align that with the room, and we're going to make it the size of the room, basically, with normal Blender modeling. So I'm going to say Tab, I'm going to go 3, and we're going to just start adjusting this so it lines up with the spaces inside the room. And we're going to say Control R, so we just occupy the correct space here. 3, and then E. And then you see we've occupied that whole space. But I also want another space here in this little bathroom space. I'm going to say Shift D to duplicate. Press Y to bring it to the edge here. And I'm going to say separate selection. I'm going to select this, tab into it, select A, E, extend, and then drag it here. Now we have two spaces that have 3D representations of each. Basically, these are our rooms. So this one, the small one, is the bathroom. And this big one is going to be the office. So what we want to do here is go to the Object Properties tab. We're just going to close the transform because we don't need that at the moment. We're going to come down here to IFC Object Med Data, and we're going to select IFC Spatial Elements, IFC Space, and we're going to make that an internal space. And we're just going to say Assign Class. So you see it's put in its own little box there for the IFC Office Space, and it's very clear. So we're just going to select the bathroom and we've selected all these elements before already and we say assign class and it's also put it into its own little space there. I'm just going to hide them for now. They're going to be more useful later. I'm just going to press H so that they're out of the way and we're going to move on to our next stuff. We're going to draw some slabs in. So I'm just going to press 7 on the numpad. I'm going to snap the 3D cursor to this inner corner and we basically want a floor slab that covers the inside. So we select the tool. And we go here to the BIM tool again, and we're just going to select the slab type. And I'm going to use a 150 floor slab type, which is the default. And I'm just going to say Shift A, and then it's been added. Now to edit it, we can just say Edit Profile with Shift E. And we select two to select the edges. And we're just going to snap these to the inside. And we're going to say Shift Q to save what we've done. And you can see it's been added as a floor at the bottom there. And then I just want a little roof covering over this uh, entrance hall. So I'm just going to go 7 again, and I'm just going to say Shift A to create another one, and I'm going to line this up because I'm quite happy with that width. And we say Shift E, so just this edge is adjusted, and we say Shift Q, so it's adjusted. And we're just going to bring it to above the doorway, roughly. Okay, cool. So now we have a, a, a little off duck overhang, and we have a slab, floor slab. The next thing we want to do is to create a roof. So I'm just going to go come here and use this other uh, floor as, an, as a basic adjustment uh, because what I want to do is create a 50 millimeter roof. So I'm just going to add this floor here and I'm going to bring it to the top here and snap it to the top and I'm going to give it a 5 degree slope to snap it at first and then I'm going to come here into the object properties again and we're going to come down here into the IFC object data meta metadata and we're going to go down to the object material basically and we're going to click this little edit button and we're going to scroll down and we're going to click this little edit button again and then here where it says layer thickness we're just going to change this to 50 50 millimeters and i'm just going to say tick and tick so that's been saved basically i'm just going to move this down gz so it's aligned with that edge and then from above tabbing seven tapping seven i'm going to say shift e to edit the profile select two to select an edge and then we're just going to drag these so they line up nicely and we say shift q to save it so i actually want this to have a bit of an overhang so i'm just going to tap into seven again we gy to the edge and minus 300 and we say shift e select this edge and bring it in again so we say shift q and there it's saved at the correct size now we have these walls are a bit too low so i'm just going to take these three exterior walls and we're just going to give them a height of 3,500 so that they're above uh, the roof there and I think that works out quite nicely. So now I just want to go into doing beams, I've seen beams. So we're just going to see that there's this beam 2 which is a C channel and there's beam 1 which is an I beam. So I'm going to start with beam 2. I'm just going to hide this roof with H for now and I'm just going to add the beam. So I'm just going to shift A and you see it was added to the bottom over there. 
So I'm just going to select the beam and I'm going to bring it to the top. GZ. Uh, I'm going to bring it inside of this one because it's going to line up with the edge of that wall. And I'm going to say Shift R to rotate it. You can see it's extended a bit too much there. I'm just going to bring it out GY and GY minus 300. And then I'm just going to extend it with Shift E so it adds to that to that extent and we're, we're going to rotate it to match the roof line so we're going to say r x rotate x five degrees to match the roof and then we're just going to say r x to line it up with the inside of that wall there and maybe just extend it so it's lining up inside of that wall as well then we're going to come over here to the modifier properties and you can see there's a thing called an ifc array we're just going to click it we're going to edit this and I'm going to do four beams, which are along the X axis, the red one, and they're going to be 1,200 millimeters or 1.2 meters apart. And I'm just going to click that. And then you see it's arrayed four beams across in this direction. That was quite simple and easy and very useful. And then we're just going to unhide our roof, which is conveniently directly over on top of it. And we can see that there's a bit of a gap between the roof and this and this uh, uh, wall so we could if we wanted to uh, just lower the roof onto it or we could just select the roof select the wall and say shift e and the wall is clipped to the roof now here i don't want this wall this lower wall to be the one that's on this edge i want the higher wall to be so i'm just going to select the higher wall and select the lower wall and say shift t to shift that up okay cool so we've got some walls and roofs and all sorts of things um, the one problem is I can see is my slab is exposed. So I want my walls actually to sit 150 millimeters uh, lower than they are currently. So we're just going to select all the elements that are too high, including the roof and our beams. And we're just going to say G Z minus 150. So it's adjusted. Oh, but there's a bit of an issue, right? Our windows and doors suddenly look terrible because the cut, the opening, did not adjust so all we have to do is select them and say shift G and it will regenerate its position you can see here regen and then it looks perfectly good um, okay cool and then the next thing we're going to do is continue with our beams I'm going to add an I beam I really want some I beams to be on the edge of this uh, slab overhang so I'm just going to say shift A and I'm going to GZ so it's up there at the top and I'm going to just adjust the length of this I beam so we're just going to select this guy and we say we want him to be 1200 roughly, I think. Okay, it's a bit short, but then we can just snap it and shift E. And then I'm just going to add another I-beam, <coughs> shift A, I'm going to say shift R and bring it up. Say GY to line it up to the edge and then again shift E, control Z. We're going to say shift E to adjust that edge. And then we just have a bit of a messy junction at the corner here, but it's quite easily resolved. We just select both of them and we say shift Y to miter that edge. And you can see it's quite a neat edge there. I'm just going to take this, um, this uh, slab roof and I'm going to adjust these, the position of these I beams. So I'm just going to bring them out to GY and G y or gx sorry and gy and then we select each of them, both of them again and we say shift y and it's perfectly uh, mitered okay cool and then we're just going to add a column uh, we're going to come down here to ifc column type and you can see there's three types we just got a rectangular column c1 uh, a round column in c2 and a small square or rectangular hollow section this is the one i'm going to use now since it's roughly a steel i'm just going to select uh, snap my 3D cursor there and I'm just going to say shift A. Um, it's been added with a height, a length of 1 200. So I think that is roughly what we need. Yes, so I've just adjusted it and I'm just going to say GX. So it's aligned to the edge. We want it to be aligned to the edge of the I beam. GX, snap in, GX, snap out. We can adjust the height with shift E and all of the rest, but that is perfectly good. And that's all we want to do with this I beam. Okay, and we can see an internal wall is sticking out here. Same story for clipping it. We select the roof, we select the wall, and we say shift E and it clips it in.
Okay, cool. There's one last thing we want to do. We want to create our own IFC, custom IFC element and classify it. So I'm going to create a little ramp here to get to the entrance of my door, which is just going to be 150 high. I'm just going to se select the normal selection tool and we say shift A, mesh plane. I'm going to adjust it. So it's in line with there, tab inside, press two and adjust the edges. So they line up with these. I'm just going to bring this so it lines up with the edge of the door and I'm going to bring it up in the Z direction and then we press E and Y so it snaps. So we have just a very slight incline on our ramp. I'm just going to come here and say ramp and then we're going to go here to the object properties and we're just going to go to the IFC object metadata, IFC class and we're just going to adjust this. This is going to be, we want it to be an element. You can see all of the IFC classes here and we just want to use, want it to be an IFC ramp and we don't want a half turn ramp. I think we want a straight run ramp and we're just going to say assign class. And there you see it's been added here. Just to note, if you don't assign uh, a 3D object with an IFC class, it won't be saved when you save the IFC. So just be careful about that. Okay, cool. We've just created our own custom 3D object. It's just a ramp. It's very simple, but you can do that with anything and classify it as an IFC object. If you don't know what to classify it as, you can use it to classify it as an IFC proxy element that is probably the simplest one. But we've made a little 3D model and I think it's time to move on to the drafting. Uh, if you found that interesting or useful, you can check out more at the OSARC community page. This was made using Blender, the Blender BIM add-on, which is powered by the IFC OpenShell. And the community that we're involved in is the OSARC community. I will provide links in the description and you can check other videos to follow along. Thanks for watching, bye bye.